What's good everybody? Today I'm going to teach you how to create a trendy double exposure effect for free in five easy steps. Are you ready? Let's go! Um. Today we're going to be using the free photo editing app PhotoP. Just head on over to PhotoP.com and I'm going to teach you how to create this double exposure effect in five easy steps. Okay, so here is the finished product. You're only going to need two files for this. The silhouette and the forest. The great thing that we love about PhotoP is that it is absolutely free. You don't even need to create an account to use it. I linked the files to the photos in the description below. And I got both of them from the free stocked image website, Pexels. So if you go over to Pexels.com, you can download free stocked images. Okay, let's get started. We're going to start by opening up our first file. Step number one is we're going to remove this background. And because we're dealing with pretty much just two colors here, black and like this off white, it's, it should be pretty easy. There's a number of ways to do this. Today we're going to use the select tool. So if you come over here to the left hand toolbar, we're going to go to the fourth tool down which is where you find the magic wand. But we are going to choose quick selection. So that's the second one. Just click on it and you'll see image analysis. So right now Photo P analyzes the image and it's going to help us select just the woman in the photo. So all you have to do is click anywhere inside the black and you can see that it created an outline around her head. It's not perfect, so we're going to clean up the edges of her hair just a tad. For that, we're going to go up to Refine Edge. You can find that in the top toolbar up here. Just click on Refine Edge. It's going to open up with two windows here. This is a preview of what the original selection looks like. And if you look closely, you can see that just around the edge of the hair, it's not quite uh, detailed. So we're going to fix that over here. That's represented by this lighter color. And all we have to do is go up here to the toolbar in the very top left hand corner. And we're going to select gray and we're going to just draw right on top of this um, white area around the edge of the hair and watch what it does. Just click and draw. Let go and then check out the preview on the right. You see that? It tightened up all around the edge of the hair. Now you can see the detail. Okay, now if you go to the top right hand corner, you see it says new layer. If you click OK, it will place this image in a new layer. What we want to do is click on the down arrow and select raster mask. And that is going to create a raster mask over this original image. So now you can see that we have a transparent background and the original photo is still there. Okay, that's step one. Step number two is we're going to create a white background layer. We're going to come down to the bottom right hand corner and we're going to click on the adjustment icon and then click on color fill. From here we want to select white and then select OK. As you can see it created a brand new layer called color fill 1. We're going to select that and we're going to drag it to the bottom so it's behind the woman. It's a good practice to label your layers so that you can find them later because sometimes you'll create these Photoshop files where you have like a bunch of different layers. It's easier to find things if you get in the habit of renaming them right away. So we'll name this one background and we'll name this one model. And all I did was double click on the name and then it allows you to edit the name. Okay, so that is step two, ladies and gentlemen. Step three is to add the second photo. So to do that in Photo P, we are going to go up to File in the top left hand corner 
and we're going to come down to open and place. So what this does is it opens it up in a new layer instead of opening it as a brand new Photoshop file. So we'll click on that. We'll find our clouds. And we'll open them. And from here, we're going to move it into place. And you can see over here on the left hand side is dark. We want that to be on this side over here. So I'm just going to flip that by grabbing a corner and rotating it. You can see that it, it's still kind of gray. We're going to adjust that in just a second. But we want to uh, enlarge this so it covers the whole side. And don't worry if you go above. Just kind of adjust it right there. What I'm going to do right here is I'm going to tilt it just a tad so it kind of uh, mirrors the angle of the head. If you can just follow the neck straight up, we're going to kind of follow that angle and then make sure it's large enough. And I want to cover this bottom just the tad right there. Okay, that looks good. So now click return or enter, or you can come up to the top and you can click on this little check mark. Okay, the next part of this step is to kind of match these colors right here. So we have a really dark black right here and kind of a gray. Let's not forget to rename this. Let's call this uh, landscape. How's that? All right. Let's adjust the color on this. So let's go up to the very top, click on image, go to adjustments, and then what we're going to do is change the brightness and contrast for this. And I'm going to bring up the contrast till it kind of matches that black. There we go. That's looking really good right there. Um, and then the brightness, if I lower that, yeah, look at that. It just blends right in. Okay. Just click OK now. Okay. The next step is to change the color of this background so that it matches the top of the landscape photo. So you can see the corner right here, it's a little bit gray. All we're going to do is go down to the background layer, click on the left thumbnail, just double click on it, and it op opens up a color picker. From here, you just go over to the very lightest part right over here. I'm going to match this 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 area of the photo right here and just click on it and you can see that it it just moved it down just a tad but you can kind of see the preview versus what I clicked on and just click OK okay and the last step is to select the landscape layer and we're gonna add a layer mask to it so come down to the bottom right click on the little rectangle with a circle in it and it adds a white layer mask. From here we're going to go over to the left hand side. We're going to make sure that black is on top and if it's not you can just click these little arrows right here and it reverses them. Then we're going to go up to the brush tool. The brush tool is right here towards the middle right underneath the little band-aid. Select that and then come up to the size up here and the shape of your um, brush and select the soft brush right here and let's change the size that's good it's a good size about 600 and what you're gonna do is you're gonna go right along the edge of the hair okay and if you can't see it um, just click on this corner right here and see what happens Okay, and so now it starts showing the edge of the hair. You see that? So if we lower the opacity just a little bit over here on the right hand side above the layers, if we lower it a little bit, we'll be able to see the outline of her hair. So we want to make sure we don't go too far there. Okay, so let's just go right along the edge of the hair. And if you happen to see any um, 
lines, like I can kind of see a line right here. We're just going to go along the edge of those lines. Okay. And then right down here by her neck, we'll go over that area. And I'm going to kind of get rid of right here as well so I can see her face just a little bit better. Okay, so that looks good. Let's turn the opacity back up. It's looking pretty close right now. Okay, the very last step is to change this landscape layer from normal to screen. So there you go, you guys. That is how you create a double exposure effect using the free app Photo P in five steps. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any ideas for some future videos that you'd like to see, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and I'd be happy to make a video for you. I'm Darren Akakihara. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.